welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I am the Raider of the Lost. Yay! Yay! It has to be snakes. Oh gosh, why do it have to be snakes? And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Wait, there were snakes? What? No one ever says there's snakes. Wait a minute. Somebody second. hold me. <laughs> Does this mean I have to sit you down for an Indiana Jones marathon? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Blanket over my head very, very slowly. Your silence speaks volumes, O Guilty One. It has spiders under it. (laughs) 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 So, this is how being evil feels. It's good. I like it. Evil is when you put the spider under the blankets. Who said I didn't? (laughs) Dun dun dun. (laughs) So, this is how Reaper must feel. I like it. Uh, but playing jokes on other people aside, this is April 2nd, so April Fool was yesterday, unless you're living in the time zone where you're still in April 1st, and you know what, this segue didn't really pan out well, but it gave me time to load up the wiki page, and this week we are reviewing the Friends Forever issue 32. In this issue, they're going to do enlist Fluttershy's help in uncovering the ancient treasure... So, well, before we officially start, first impressions are in order. And last time I went with Silver, so let's go with Seppi. Um, Seppi, what do you think? I didn't think it would work as well, like with Daring Do and Fluttershy, but I was pleasantly surprised when I first read the comic, AK last night at 4 in the morning. I don't know, I, I read the comic, I liked it and enjoyed it. It was pleasant. It was nice. Not much to say. All right, you know. And what about you, Silva? I really enjoyed this one. Fluttershy has not had great times in the Friends Forever series because more often than not, she's running away from the problem and not interacting with her partner. This was the first comic where she really got to stay put, face the problem head on, and show her best alongside her partner. Uh, so I thought it was a lot of fun. Honestly, the biggest criticism I've seen leveled against this is the artwork by Jay Foskett. Uh, everybody's a critic. Oh, yeah, there was this one panel that I noticed with um, Ellie Zoldo that looked a bit off for me. Everything about Ellie Zoldo is off. <laughs> yeah, but there was this one particular panel. Let me... Uh... I think you're talking about the part where he's tying up uh, Fluttershy and Daring Do, right? No, I didn't notice that. There was this one part I'll show... When I pull up the comic. Alright. But anywho. Well, as for me, this comic was rather interesting. I was not expecting this combination of characters. There's a few things about the cover that kind of subverts expectations. Because they always say don't judge a book by its covers and whatnot. And, well, the first cover is... Just Fluttershy and Daring Do flying through some lava while chasing butterflies and Fluttershy is holding a golden bunny. And the other cover is Fluttershy is almost getting mauled by a big giant wild cat and she's just um, expressing kitty. So, yeah. (laughs) Don't judge the book by its cover. But still, um, it's an interesting comic nonetheless. I think we should go into set reviews. Uh, if you have not read this comic yet, I recommend that you do. And, well, uh, let's carry on now. So, anywho, uh, we start off the comic with Fluttershy having a day off, having a peaceful weekend to herself where she can just do nothing and relax. You know, one of those lazy weekends where you just want to enjoy personal time. I bet we all have those times, right? Mm-hmm. I used to have those times. Then I then took an arrow to the knee. Then you became a reviewer. <laughs> then I took an arrow to the knee. Uh, you became a review and you took an arrow to the knee at the same time. So, hmm. Yes. Oh, was... oh, God. Well, looking for the moment, I found I, I found something else that involved the Captain Capilaron. You'll see when I ask why the long face. I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, but, anywho, uh, for uh, instead of having the dream of having a peaceful weekend, Fluttershy is interrupted by a knock at the door. Like, usually we would expect, you know, 
Pinkie Pie Twilight Rarity. I mean, probably Rarity because, you know, having a weekend spa date and whatnot. Yeah, th- that'll be logical, right? But opening the door reveals Daring Do tackling her down. Oh my. And the fanfics start flying. Daring Do wrestled Fluttershy to the ground. Looking into her oh, eye yeah. deeply. Her, their eyes met. They strained against one another. And Daring Do said, Can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> I, I was about to say, you two are even worse than I am when it comes to the innuendos. My goodness. <laughs> Why not, right? But anywho, um, she, she did tackle for the shy down, but not to ask a cup of sugar, but to enlist her to help her on a quest or on an adventure. The last thing on Fluttershy's mind. And Fluttershy here says, like, you know, you, you should probably talk to Rainbow Dash about it because she's great at adventures and whatnot. And the Ring Dude did meet up with Rainbow Dash, and Rainbow Dash recommended Fluttershy for this scenario here, which is to go to this jungle meet up with some exotic animals. Not really meet up with some exotic animals, but um, I don't think she revealed it here yet, but uh, the promise of exotic animals are in Fluttershy's future. And with that, Fluttershy just says yes, because if it involves animals... She's interested. Yay. We're like animals. Like animals. Uh, one animal looks like a duck. That is a strange looking duck. It's a duck a corn. Duck a corn. Hmm. I wonder if he had gold. Like, a pit of gold, you know? Like, some pit of gold that he can swim in. I, I wonder. A bit of gold? A pit. A pit, you know? Uh. A bank of gold. I'm not sure. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he can swim in it. It took a good look at this, and all the characters look weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no good one. Uh, but anywho, uh, we move on to the next page, where Daring Do explains the whole situation. Set on a train, and Daring Do explains that a professor named Flora Fauna had just discovered a new species of spiders, and it relates to some set legend. Um, the legend of Queen... Parabola, and said queen <laughs> is a alicorn zebra. Alicorn zebra, zebra corn. Zebra corns confirmed. Also, <laughs> flora fauna. <laughs> yeah, I think of two things. One, I think a plant and animal expert, and the second thing I think of is where the heck is Meriwether? <laughs> Firstly, I, I think of an old Wheeled Warriors character, but that's just because I'm old. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, she was one of the rulers, and she had a ton of treasure hidden away, and only the spider knows the location of said treasures. Which, she, she couldn't have been that good a queen, however. She spent her whole time writing, drawing maps on the backs of spiders. It's like, don't you have something better to do with your free time? Apparently not. By the way... Drink this in, and this is a cord at the end of season seven. <laughs> oh, 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 wow, that would be something. Well, she'd actually get to do something, so I wouldn't complain. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that would be something to see. Long story short, Daring Do wants Fluttershy to catch a spider, and Fluttershy just asked the most obvious questions, like, why don't you catch the spider? Because you're Daring Do, the bravest adventurer and whatnot. And... Daring Do just says, I'm allergic to spiders. Okay. Uh-huh. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Allergic to the terror of spiders, more like. Am I right, folks? Am I right? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. But Daring Do just says, like, okay, we need to be hush-hush. We, we, we don't want to, we, we don't want anybody to listen to us talk. So, yeah, uh, we, we need to be quiet. And they go to their first stop and discover that, oh, the location of said spider is down in a deep, dark hole where it's really really deep and well Fluttershy you're the animal expert go ahead I'll give you the slamp yay push yep <laughs> that's Fluttershy's flight career in a nutshell someone pushes her off and she has to make do yep and this is why Cloudsdale has lousy teachers <laughs> oh no uh, but it's a really good uh, great way to initiate <laughs> uh, but I do like uh, the panel where Fluttershy is panicking and her face is really awesome uh, by just looking at that panel there, you would not know that was Jay Fosgate's work until you look at the, yeah, at the panel. 
Really? That's yeah, it was mostly because it, it looks like those guys are beating up a little Philly. Of course it's Jay Foskett's artwork. I, I'm, I'm really? seeing the panel where, uh, just Fluttershy just say, down in the deep, dark, panic-induced pit. Oh, she's saying, I'm, I'm not scared, I'm not scared? No, 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 it's the top one. Hello, spiders? Uh, um, I think we're, um, I'm on, I'm still on page, uh, eight. Down in this deep, dark, panic inducing p- 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 pit? Yeah, 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 yeah. With the trembly lips? Yep, yep, yep. It's funny, I've never paid attention to that lip quiver. I'd take some muscle control. I know. People give a lot of flack on Jay's artwork, and it's a hit and miss kind of deal where, personally for me, I've grown to enjoy it. And looking at him do things like this really, well, really surprised me and really make, give me a smile like, oh, this is really good. I like to see this more, please. Or please. Yep, yep. My examples just lead to like the thing that I posted down below. Uh, that one. Uh, yeah. But anywho, uh, Fluttershy goes down and well, briefly enough, she does her job, which is pretty cool. And upon reaching the ground, she meets with the spiders and hmm, the spiders are not what I expect them to look. You're expecting fuzzy legs levels of whoa. Well, besides fuzzy legs, I mean, I was hoping something like a real spider, you, you know, with three segmented body parts. Uh, you were you were hoping for a spider that would like liquefy a butterfly's innards and slurp it all up. Um, not to that detail. That's too scary for kids. Well, what, fuzzy legs, yes. Let's go with fuzzy legs. And <laughs> upon reaching the ground, Fluttershy is just so adorable. She she just uh, she likes. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. She is just so adorable here. Keep Although focusing. she looks like on the one side, she doesn't have any um. Arms or hooves, frontal hooves. Oh, well, she's got them angled up. Yep. Oh, you mean oh, where she's ascending? Yeah. She's, oh, because her because her front hooves are sort of tucked against her belly. Mm-hmm. Well, the spider's just hanging onto her mane. That spider's pretty chill. Oh yeah. And then we reach the panel where Daring is having a brawl, and that's probably one of the most widely criticized panels. Really now? Yeah. Once again, it looks like Daring Do is a little filly and a bunch of older pirate guys are coming to beat up a little filly. Yar. Uh, well, it, it looks- With a stick! And a crowbar! I don't- And a plunger for some reason! Oh great, we're, we're in a Jeff Dunham skit. What a geek. Uh, but still, it's Jade's Foskett style. I, it's, it's a, it, uh, it's just for to get style, it, and it's something like you get used to it over time. I'm a rusty nail on his beak. <laughs> uh, but Daring do ask for the shy for help, which said help involves her grabbing a whip. Oh my. And we're back to Fifty Shades of Daring. Yay. So this panel here is rather interesting because of how it's drawn. And... I, I don't know how to explain this because it shows the fight happening yet Fluttershy is moving along them and I, I don't know. Silver, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? Well, clearly Fluttershy passed the mirror pool on the way up or down. But now this, this is actually pretty common in, uh, in some comics when they're trying to convey an action scene. Really, you're implying the, fl- the fight as Fluttershy moves through it. Mm-hmm. And so, while it looks like there's four of her, really, she's just there in different stages of the fight, moving perhaps faster than the fight itself. So, it's something I've I've seen before, and so I don't feel all that put off by it. Oh, okay. But still, it's just weird. But, so the Chai gives the whip to Daring, and Daring whips everyone into shape. Lul. In more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Daring took the whip apart in her hooves and smote them Cut. most mightily. Yep. <laughs> and, they, and they were all like, oh, ah, oh, e, ooh, a, e, i, o, oh, ooh, sometimes why. <laughs> oh, oh, you. So, um, upon uh, giving this smackdown, we are met with Calabar- Calabara? Cal- Cal- uh, 
uh, Calabaron. Professor Cab- Caballeron. Yeah, Caballeron. Caballero. Caballero. Yes. <laughs> you know, every time I, I look at all, like, the stallions in this comic, I keep wanting to ask him why the long face. My God. Oh, uh, well. So. <laughs> They're just horsing around. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. But anywho, um, Caliberon says that, ha, we got the spider map, so you won't know where to go. And also, you can either chase us or help Fluttershy, your companion. Ha ha, ha ha, we are escaping now. Ha ha, ha ha. What, what do I feel like you're quoting Mandark? Ah ha ha, ah ha ha, ah ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha, ah ha ha. Why not, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, Daring helps Fluttershy down and says like, darn it, Calabaron got the map and there's no way to figure things out. But I always stop him, so there's no change now. And Fluttershy says, hey, we still got our eight-legged friend here. And shows it to Daring Do. And Daring Do screams. I mean, good. Good. I'm, I'm glad we have, we have plot yep. good, progression. Good, good save, um, Daring. So with that, they decipher the spiders back and look at the map. And, we are greeted to a montage of things that could have gone wrong, but glad Fluttershy was there. You need a montage. Montage. Everybody's got a montage. Montage. So, anywho, uh, it's, it's a really short montage. Um, Daring and Fluttershy looks at a map, and a saber-tooth tiger pops up trying to maul. Fluttershy and Daring, and Fluttershy does her patent I wrap your belly combo, and yay, they discover the castle. Hmm. I, I love how that tiger or whatever it's supposed to be, like a puma or a panther, I, I, I kind of like how it like just stretches down even past its neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that is derp, that is derp there. Oh yeah. But still, um, they discover the castle and goes in. And you know the whole chatter about, oh, be careful at this castle. It's full of booby traps. Eh, I said boobies. Uh, hey, boobies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, they be careful and avoided all the traps. Uh, from big giant axes to big giant mallets smacking each other, and also metal men trying to kill them. Mm. And a big fiery spray trying to burn them alive. Mm. This castle seems to have modern technology. All right. And, well, they arrive to the chamber and are captured by Awizoto. Who's always there. It's like, there. I was actually very happy for... Stranger than fan fiction, where Caballeron was the only enemy. It wasn't just Aoi's Odal for the umpteenth time. Uh, true. Mm-hmm. But still, in this one, you would expect um, Aoi's Odal here. Uh, no, I don't. I, I got no idea what's going on here. But still, it's interesting. Aoi's Odal tackles them. No, no, no. I mean, um, having a villain, like, in the first appearance, it made things um, logical to have... Awizotl in his first appearance because, well, it has something to do with ancient Mayan Incan or whatever it is kind of uh, mythology and having a character like Awizotl be there is logical. And in the second one, having Caballeron as the main villain does make sense too. But in this one, having them together again and I'm going to skip a bit where Caballeron and Awizotl are dealing like, pay me first. No, you do my job first. Like, huh? Mm. It shows that Awizotl here is not mystical. He's just money. Like, he's just... Huh, yeah. Money, <laughs> money, money. Which is the ultimate evil. Uh, true. <laughs> true. No, you're going to go to... I mean, look at Trump. Oh, no. Uh, I'd, ra- I'd rather not. I don't, ha- I don't have enough bleach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho... Uh, Awizoto catches them and just says the whole, you know, the villain shebang says, Haha, I have captured you, you will have no chance to defeat me. I shall remain triumph. And, um, who are you again? 
Um, Fluttershy. Oh, yes, Fluttershy. Uh, my my name is Fluttershy. <laughs> uh, uh, n- n- nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, now I shall tie you up with the ring you and put you into a hole. Have fun. Kinky. And oh gosh. You know. <laughs> and well, before um, throwing them into the hole. Arisoto notices there's a spider on Fluttershy's head and remarks that, Haha, you are brave, daring do to be on an adventure with your new friend. But farewell, you're gonna die. And, well, being the hero that they are, they stop from certain doom and... Daring do explains her situation that she's not allergic to spiders, but she's afraid of them. She's scared. And this part here goes where... Um, uh, uh, even though you're afraid, you're very brave. You, uh, you, you, you're brave. You've done the things that some others will not do. And they have a whole conversation about how brave as I may be, I'm still scared. Like, going down a deep dark hole, being in a brawl, being tied up, being like, well, oh, I'm scared. But I don't let that affect me because I know people are depending on me. Plus, you know, the whole tied up thing, maybe she's got a little bit of flutter dom in her. Oh, yeah, well. Well, we all know that Fluttershy is the dominance one. Ooh. Uh, but anywho. And thus the fanfics did flow. Yep, indeed. But anywho, um, Fluttershy says that uh, they're not stuck yet because our little eight legged friend here knows how to untie a knot, which is the triple decker pepper knot. Is that even a real thing? I wouldn't know, but the fact that she does know actually adds fuel to my rather questionable mentality about Fluttershy. (laughs) Ah, yes. I'm going to actually look that up to see if it's a thing. Uh, All right, Safi, fact check. Yeah, yeah. Work that Google. Work it. Well, um, huh. Apparently there's a thing called (laughs) peppernot.com. It's uh, apparently a fashion website, so how, that doesn't count. How unfortunately named. Yes. But anywho, um, while you do the Google search, I'm just going to carry on. So, no, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So, um, well, as I mentioned, Spider knows how to untie it. But the problem is, Spider needs to crawl all over Daring Do's face. <laughs> uh, to so quote Homestar Runner, and then I put it on my face. I'm just gonna let that sink into you people at home who has a Ooh, reckon- sink in. We- uh, Norman, you kinky devil. Uh, I'm just gonna try Silver, and Silver, hide me. He's too kinky. I'm just gonna try and continue. I- I'm just, for whoever of you at home who has arachnophobia, let this sink into you. The only way to save your life is to have a spider crawl over your face to get to set knot. Yep. I feel like we should rename our show the BDSM. <laughs> no! No! Yes! No. Yes! <laughs> no! Uh, but anywho, Spider unties not, and they're free! Yay! Wait, Silver, now I question your mentality after hearing you say, oh, we should rename it this. Really? You're you're only asking this now? Yeah, like, yeah. Hmm. You've never brought this up until now. Have you not? Have you not paid attention to her girl? I mean, him girl. Hmm. To, to to her girl? I, okay, now now I'm wondering what kind of messages I am sending. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, let's carry on before we say things we cannot take it back. <laughs> uh, Too late. <laughs> Uh, anywho, Fluttershy and Daring Do traverse the castle and here's a voice. Here's an argument between Caballeron and Awizoto. Caballeron says, pay me. And Awizoto says, do your job. Pay me, do your job. And to break up this couple, Daring Do jumps in and says, Ah oh, no, you are not going to get treasure. I am going to get treasure and I'm going to kick your butts. Yay. Yay! Huzzah! They form a plan while um, Daring Do distracts the people. Fluttershy goes free the spiders. 
and oh god oh god the the henchman has this word worded properly thousands upon thousands of spiders run away run away run away well okay true story here uh Local news station did a feature on spiders at the at our zoo, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this at one point the the uh, zoologist was holding up this spider that you could hold in two hands yes. with very long long legs and accidentally dropped the spider and it started scurrying. The cameraman shrieked, <laughs> just like raised three octaves, and. I could not blame him because even though spiders are not my greatest fear, you see something like that scurrying along the ground, not knowing its intent, you have every right to scream like a schoolgirl on helium. <laughs> I'm just saying. Was it poisonous? Yeah, to... I, I wouldn't even be near that thing, to be honest. <laughs> there is no judgment here, only understanding. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Although I will still laugh in your pain. Even though well, it's not that funny. <laughs> well, Schadenfreude is always another thing because we're, you know, horrible people. <laughs> True. That. Uh, but talking about horrible people, Abizoto says, Cowards, they are only insects. Fluttershy, re- <laughs> Fluttershy corrects him by saying arachnid. And I have to correct Fluttershy here. Like, do they have three parts? Like, they have only two here, I see. A body and a head. And that counts as insects. I know my arachnids. They have three parts to them. Uh-huh. But anywho, while being distracted, Fluttershy... Does this mean you wanted a three-part story? No. no. <laughs> uh, while Arizoto is distracted, uh, Daring Do drops a pillar onto Arizoto and reveals the treasure and knocking Arizoto out. Yay. Although... Yay. I cannot believe they got this past the censors. Oh, buttons? Really now? What is the world coming to where you could just say, oh, buttons, without consequence? Well, a room. Fertish, I did say won't it at someone, the very beginning. Won't someone please think of the children? Ask that to Flarsha. She's the first one to say it. Well, oh, buttons. Well, Flarsha well, has Bob. the mouth of a sailor. <laughs> True not to that. Pay attention. Miss Peeved. <laughs> oh, <laughs> flying feathers. <laughs> It's always the quiet ones, isn't it, Silver? Yeah. Is that why she's your favorite? Because she curses a lot? Of course. That, why the... Do you think I like her? Oh, please tell me you have a dolphin sound effect. Please tell me you do. Adol- uh, sadly, I don't have a dolphin on this sound box. Oh, dang it. <laughs> uh, but, anywho... I have a fart noise. No, no. Oh, wait, that's a jack. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Same thing. No. Uh, but any... <laughs> oh, gosh. But anyway. That's it. That's when that you gotta drop the kids. That's yeah, when you gotta drop the kids off at the pool. Oh, God. Uh, but anyway. Uh, Fluttershy, the ring do says thanks to Fluttershy for being there and being a great help. And Fluttershy says thanks and Comments that Daring Do is, well, uh, being brave and she's ca- overcoming her fears and even made a spider friend, which Daring Do screams like a little girl and uh, cowers and whimpers. And they, and Fluttershy just says, baby steps. Look at her smug face. <laughs> baby steps. Well, it, it it's very rare for her to be on the outside looking in. Yes. Ah, mm-hmm. Look at her. What was it? What was it? Tyrion Lannister once said, well, "Of course, I wanted to mistreat him for being different. It was the only time I got to feel normal." <laughs> uh, that's just mean. But anyway, comic ends. Uh, so, with that, uh, let's go to um, well, overall thoughts. And Seppi, what do you think? I actually like it a little bit better than I remember from 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed this comic. I especially, and this is going to seem weird coming from me, the absolute 
person who does not like Jay Foskin in any way whatsoever when it comes to art. I really like the way Flourish I was drawn in this comic. Like, I don't know, the Flowing Mane and Jay Foskin, it it works with Flourish Eye, but every other pony, uh, uh, eh. And Silva? I enjoyed this one. This is the only comic where Fluttershy is not running away from her problem. If anything, perhaps because she's next to an adventure like Daring Do, she really knuckles down and just works through it, which is doubly impressive because ponies do not have knuckles, mm. so far as I know. Actually, I actually got to biology punked by uh, an actual horse breeder. When? Same thing. No? Back, way back in reviewing Pinky Pride, where we made the, in my view, not unreasonable assertion that horses don't have armpits. Oh. Mostly because, you know, you have to have arms. <laughs> you know, they do have a, a biological feature that is considered a armpit-y. So we're having an arm pity party. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think that Fluttershy did an excellent job in this. Daring Do is perhaps not, uh, really fleshed out, but we get to see that even she, hey, heck, Indiana Jones really did have a fear of snakes. Why can't his pony counterpart fear spiders? True. Because it's for the weak. <laughs> not really. Hey, if, it, if fear is for the weak, then I am a fragile little flower. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised there. I'm afraid you're right. Uh-uh. <laughs> and so I think this is fun all around. I, I get what people say when they criticize Jay Foskett's style, because there are some very standout panels for where characters look stretched or very disproportionate. At the same time, his his heart is never lacking in energy. And it conveys the world very well in my eyes. I It takes some getting used to, but I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. Um, as for me, I highly enjoy this comic too. It's one of those comics where having the oddest couple here is just interesting to see where they formulate. And like you mentioned before, Silver, uh, Fluttershy, and, yeah, Fluttershy here does play a prominent role. She's not... In the background, she's always in every panel where she's prominent. She's well, she's a prominent role. Where she's active. Yes, she's active. Where each panel shows at least her in it. Like if she's not playing a big part, she's just there being tied up, or she's just being afraid of something. And it's really interesting. It's really fun. And the ratio of her ratio and the induced ratio on page is high, unlike some of the others. A really bad, a really good example of set difference is Luna and Spike. That was a very, very interesting comic. But with this one, I do like how they kind of made the do have a bit of character development. Um, she's afraid of spiders, um, like Indiana Jones and his uh, fears of snakes. Daring Do must have something, and it's snakes, sorry, uh, and it's spiders. And having the nature expert here is really interesting. And the whole lesson of even if you're afraid of something, that doesn't mean you must let it dictate or control you. You still can do things, or... The word here is you can still be brave but afraid at the same time, which is really an oxymoron. But still. Hey, who are you calling an oxymoron? <laughs> oh, you. <clears throat> Tell that to the ox. I, actually, I, imagine, I imagine the ox would be like, I find that highly offensive. Oh, I am highly offended. <laughs> ha, ha, ear of the ox. Uh, ha, ha. But yeah. anywho... Um, that's my thoughts. Anything else to add before we, um, skip to the, before we move on to the next thing? The, the, the shot of Fluttershy and Daring Do getting thrown into a pit will, of course, make its way into a body pillow at a convention. This is the law of fandoms. (laughs) Oh, well. All you need to do is ask and look at the catalog under the table. Oh, my. Uh, but anywho, there's a review for issue 
32. And Silver, what is next week's thing? What are you going to do next week? Well, next week we're going to do something special. We're going to venture outside the realm of ponies to talk about a, a crossover from my childhood. Ooh. Yes, I had a childhood too before ponies. Ha ha. Ooh, that's Are interesting. Then... That's interesting. Do we want to reveal it here or make people wait? Ooh, let's make them wait. Yes. Let's have them ponder and stew and wonder what on earth from the time before time when Silver Quill was just a wee tyke. Yep, yep, yep. So that's just the Wait, thing. I want to hear about it too. Oh, she's, pull- she's pulling an apple bloom. But I want it now. <laughs> uh, well, I guess you just have to wait till next week then. But anywho. But Norman. <laughs> uh, Sorry. But anywho, that's it for this week's review. And well, if you would like to hear more, do subscribe to this channel, the YouTube or the iTunes. We do this on a weekly basis. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill. I have been Sapphire Hotson. And we'll guys catch you next week for another amazing adventure to the depths of the unknown. Which is the NBS show. See ya. BDSM show. No! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Adios. Bye-bye. So is this show going Fifty Shades grayer than before? Apparently. No. No. No!